Good morning, people. It's uh, Monday afternoon. I've been to Bedford this morning to uh, get my daughter's bank account set up for university. So it's a late start. But I've uh, checked up on the oil feed pipe and I've uh, fitted the. Uh, we're going flying. I've fitted the new oil cooler. Isn't that posh? All copper slipped and bolted on and plenty of clearance down there. So that's that job done. So next job is to rebuild the carburetor and rebuild the uh, alternator which has dry bearings. So I'm going to crack on with those and I'll bring you back and show you some of each. Okay, back to the bench. Back to me. And I'll catch you in a bit. Bye for now. Right peeps, well, I've done the carburetor, cleaned the fuel inlet filter, cleaned behind the uh, the valve, the uh, cut off valve, float valve, uh, it was mucky. I've cleaned in the float chambers, which both had a bit of dust and muck in them. Uh, the accelerator pump jet fell out when I took the carburetor to bits because the o-ring on it was absolutely hard as bloody nails so I've put a new o-ring on there uh, I think I think that's about it what I might just do is pour some petrol into the float chamber and just pump the pump the accelerator pump and make sure the diaphragm's alright now if the diaphragm's not alright I'm obviously going to have to order one but I've never had any trouble with them before so I've no reason to suspect it's going to be faulty but basically I've just blown all the jets out, blown the muck out of it uh, set the filter it's just easier to do it with, with the carburetor off the engine uh, than it is with it back on so there we go, right I'll get on with that and I'll bring you back when there's something more to show you oh look, o-ring kit that's from Littles, these are a real bargain these o-rings bye for now Here's a little quickie for you peeps, making gaskets. Right, I need a gasket for this carburetor base, there isn't one. Right, piece of gasket paper, tap out, little hammer, little hammer, tap out the holes, two holes, with the ball pin. You can do it like this, just by finding the hole and rubbing it like that. And then, just little taps, and that's the hole done. Find the hole at this side, same thing. A rub with the ball pin of the hammer, which is rough enough to work its way through the paper. Little tap, that one's gone. Round the edge, find the edge, I mean, it isn't perfect on this one because it's aluminium and it's soft and it's a soft edge. Much easier on steel, but that is actually cutting there perfectly. And even if it doesn't cut, it's marked it. There you are, you can see how easily that cut there. Just get into there, tuck into there. I think that's about it, I think we've got it there. Eh? Put it there. That's there, there. Yeah. And there we go. 
carry on on the internal side. And you found that gasket making is actually quite easy. There we go. Right. I'll just see if I can get that fit off. Yep, that's gone. And get. You don't need to break, just little taps. And that's it, that's it. that one's gone. Right, let's look at under here now. Right, we're there. So on now there's a little there's a little semicircular area there with a the jet in it and a little semicircular area there with a the jet in it which I'll probably have to cut out by hand but that is no matter what we have now is the small show as you can see this takes very little time produces a very accurate gasket. And there's another little semicircle out there. Here we are, single edged razor blade and a Stanley knife blade. So we can just cut these like that. Of course, it might help if I've got a sharp Stanley knife blade. That's better. Right, there we go. Right, I'll just check it out and. Uh, where does that go, Jim? There aren't any cutouts. We don't need to cut. We don't need to cut those semicircles out because there aren't actually any cutouts on the carburetor, so they obviously spray sideways into there, so the gasket can stay as it is. Right. And that is the gasket made. As simple as. As simple as that. Okay, peeps, bring you back in a bit. Right, peeps, it's the end of day one. The carburetor's back on the engine. I'll just show you that. You don't mind going floating. The carburetor's back on the engine. The alternator bracket's back on the engine. That was a faff. The uh, oil filler neck's back on the engine. The uh, oil cooler's back on the engine. What else? Uh, the alternator's now stripped down. It's got very dry bearings, as I thought. And it's also got. I'll just put it back. In. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's also got rather what I would say is quite. Can you see that there? Quite a badly worn brush pack. See, they're not very high those, and they should be longer than that. Now, I've probably got new carbon brushes I can put in there, if I can be bothered, right? Uh, and I can get these bearings out. This bearing, this bearing's easier. Just take the uh, rubber seal out the back, plastic seal out the back, 
wash it out, put some more grease in it. This one's a bit more awkward. It's riveted into the case, but I can unrivet it and put three little bolts in, or I can just unrivet it and rivet it up again. Uh, once again, it's doable. But it depends on whether it's worth it or not, what the price of a new alternator is. So I'll be looking at the price of a new alternator. I'm also going to be seeing if one of these uh, brush holders is available as a spare part, which they used to be. Uh, there's many, many alternators that uh, when people recondition them, all they do is clean the case, put a couple of new bearings in and a new diode pack, and that's a reconditioned alternator. Uh, and the diode packs are a fraction of the cost of a new alternator. Uh, but we'll see. I'll, I'll have a look on the internet tonight, see what I can find. And uh, I might just go for a reconditioned one. But if I can, if I can get a if I can get a brush pack, uh, I can soon save these bearings. I mean, these bearings are pennies, you know. And replacing them, getting that off, isn't difficult. The rivets, the rivet heads are on the outside, so they've been riveted there, well I can soon I can soon clean those up and get them up I think. Yeah they just do actually just staked over I think. Soon get them up. Right, okay well it's it's time I washed off I think. It's time I had a wash. It's uh, going on uh, five o'clock and I think that'll be it for today. What time is it? It's God yes it's, it's uh, sixteen forty three, nearly quarter to five so I'll call that it for today, people, and uh, I'll see you on Tuesday. Not next Tuesday. Not next Tuesday. I'll see you this Tuesday. Bye for now. Good morning, people. It's Tuesday. It's 10.45, and the results of the research on the internet for parts for this alternator last night uh, revealed that an exchange alternator is 60 quid plus, which is quite expensive for a room this tiny. Right, this, this brush box is 17 pounds or 15 pounds from Burton in Holland, from Burton 2CB in Holland. But it also revealed that the brushes aren't much longer than what you see there. So I'm going to put this back on. And if it fails in the future, I shall strip this box and I shall put new carbon brushes in it because uh, when you look at the actual cost of brushes to put in this box, they're between 80 pence and £1.50. And I'm pretty sure I've got some roughly that size anyway, so they shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, I think this is happening because two CVs have changed from being interesting quirky little cars to being expensive and uh, quite desirable little cars and are now uh, beginning to uh, screw the spare parts market for every penny they can. Uh, this is obviously designed so they can't be repaired. Uh, this, this is all bits of bent metal. Uh, I mean this is very cheaply made. This this tag here, which you would expect to be brass because a spade tag goes on it, is actually steel. Uh, this is a very, very cheaply made thing, and to charge 17, it should be about five pound, five, six pound at the most. Uh, to charge 17 pound for it is obscene. 15 pound is still quite expensive. Uh, I could probably repair it in 30 minutes. Right, which, which I suppose you've got to consider that that, that is at least five or six pounds in labour. Uh, but there you go, it's up to you, you pay your money and you take your choice. Personally, having bought brush packs for much bigger alternators that were a lot cheaper and remembering the days when alternators were fitted with brushes that you could replace without buying a brush pack. You, you just bought a pair of brushes and you put new brushes in. Uh, this is the world we live in today. This is the world we live in today. It's like it's like printers and printing ink. Uh, if you can sell the printer cheap but sell keep on selling ink supplies for it which are really really expensive. Printing ink is more expensive per milliliter 
than vintage champagne. So if you can sell the printer cheap but keep on screwing people for the ink for years and years and years, well, for as long as the printer lasts and then bring out a new model uh, with a different cartridge, of course, uh, you can make money. You can make lots of money. Have I got a one in here? I think I have. What's that say? Low battery. Okay, that's all right. We're still filming. Uh, right, chaps, we'll call that it for this bit. I'm going to crack on, whack these bearings out, get some grease into them and see how they go. I'll bring you back when I've done that. Bye for now. Uh. Okay people, alternators, the rotor, the slip rings, right, back bearing. Now the back bearing that's is actually quite smooth on this but I'm going to just pop the seal out and, and check it and add a bit of grease perhaps. This rotor is a fixed magnet right so it has a single coil inside it which one end of each each end of the coil is connected to a slip ring so in order to test the rotor right, all you need to do is ensure that there's continuity between those slip rings and on this rotor there is so we've, we're pretty sure that this is a good rotor uh, if you know the uh, alternator or if you have the service manual for alternators you will find in there that the particular resistance reading that this uh, rotor should give and then you can test it even more accurately you also need to just check that the uh, just check that these two connections here are nice and firm and properly soldered. So that's it for that. A bit more complicated checking the uh, stator, but to be honest, you very rarely get anything go wrong with either the rotor or the stator. The main problems with the uh, alternators are bearings and diode packs and because this alternator has an external control box which has the rectifying diodes in it I don't expect to be any more problems with this uh, I'm just going to clean everything up re-grease the bearings and reassemble it and then when it's on the vehicle I'll test it uh, but there you go I think that's it really other than a good wash and uh, some new grease in the bearings it should be fine so right, having tested the rotor and cleaned up the pole pieces on the wire brush because they were very rusty, uh, I'm now going to reassemble it and uh, that's a bit of job done. So I'll bring you back later when I've done it. Bye for now. There you go people. Bearings clean as a whistle but very nice and quiet and smooth but very little grease visible in it. Uh, Getting these seals out is really simple. If you get a jeweler screwdriver, not covered on little bits of metal like that, is it? and you just press on the outer bit there, it'll pop out. Right? They're really easy to get out, really easy to put back in. Right? So I'm going to pop some grease in there, and then I'm going to uh, put the seal back on and uh, carry on with the other one. Bye for now. There we go, folks, she's all back together. Isn't that nice and quiet now? Complete silence. And smooth running as well. Not right. Got the brush pack back on. Uh, there is actually when you when you assemble this brush pack, uh, you do actually have to push it down against the slip rings. So there is some brush material left on there. But as I say, if it packs up, I'll know what it will be, and I shall. Uh, I shall replace the brush pack. Okay, so the next job, I can't actually put the alternator back on yet, I don't think, because I need to put that metal case on, which means disconnecting the metal case from the wiring uh, harness and making sure that I can put the wiring harness in afterwards. I'm pretty sure you can. Uh, so that's the next job. So. That's what I'm going to do next, but first, it's midday, just gone, and I'm going to have a cup of tea. 
because it's very warm outside. It's a beautiful day. Let me just take you and show you the show the the beautiful day we're having today. Isn't that fabulous, eh? Isn't that fabulous? And let me tell you, it's hot. And that's why I'm going to have a nice cup of tea. Bye now. I've been around the inside and cleaned all the rust out and uh, given it a coat of rust proof primer. And uh, I'm going to give it a quick coat of black. It's out here in the... Uh, it's out here in the sun and it's actually quite hot so that should cure that right and uh, put some brackets back on the carburetor and uh, made myself a cup of tea so it's carrying on it's going on I've repaired the uh, there was a split in the cowl in there which I prepared with gaffer tape, which was what was on it before, and it lasted well, so there we are. Right, I'm going to have my cup of tea. Cup of tea. I'm going to have my cup of tea. See you later, peeps. Good morning, people. It's Wednesday. Uh, it's very dull and overcast, but apparently there's going to be no rain, so that's good. And I think I'm ready to put the engine back in. Uh, yesterday, I lost some footage yesterday because what I thought was the uh, was a battery warning was actually the camera telling me that there was no room left on the SD card. So I lost some footage yesterday, but I don't know how much. Uh, I'll tell you when I when I edit down and, and and put it out at the end of the week. Yesterday, I cleaned out the fan cowl. Painted it on the inside and fitted it. Got it fitted to the cooling shrouds, and we're about there. I'm not going to put the alternator on yet because that'll be easier done uh, after the uh, engines in the vehicle. And I've got to put this rubber cover on here, but that goes on after. You've put in the wiring harness and you've connected the ignition terminal and the uh, oil pressure switch, which is just through there. You won't, probably won't be able to see that, but whatever. Uh, right, so I've got to put the engine in now. This is all fixed on. Uh, and we're ready to go. So what I'm going to do now is lift the bonnet on the vehicle. And I'm going to lower this down to engine putting in height and then just lift it across uh, they're not that heavy they're not that heavy they, they, you can't manhandle them hiya oh I see delivery for across the road ok right I'll get on with that and I'll bring you back and show you when it's in bye for now success my back knows I've done it but nevertheless there's the bolt sticking through the hose And there's the engine mount on up this side. And she's all sitting down. And I haven't broken anything, which is always uh, a good sign. So there you go. Right, I'm going to get it bolted in, people. And then, uh, I should think after the end of today, we'll be able to carry on from where we were about three weeks ago. But never mind. Every day in every way, it's getting better and better. Right, I'll bring you back in a minute. Bye now. No, that can't be right. Right, peeps. Uh, it's in. I found another problem. These engine mountings at this side are sagging a bit because they're a bit weak. So I'm going to strengthen them up. Uh, when I put this engine in this tractor. I actually did it outside on the yard because my brother was using this workshop for his business, which was CambrayCovers.com. And uh, I couldn't get in the workshop apart from to use a drilling machine, etc, etc. So I did it outside. So by, uh, by definition, it was done as easily as possible. And there's a lot of things that I should have made stronger. These engine mounts here are... 
out on a limb and too flexible so I'm going to make some more in a similar vein but with stronger steel and more reinforced so that's what I'm going to get on with next so I'm going to do that now okay bye for now right folks gusset's welded into the uh, gusset's welded into the engine mounts to so just stiffen up again and by god has it stiffened them up so I can now carry on with the reassembly uh, yes I've got those engine mounts back on uh, I actually looked I actually looked I don't know whether it's that manifold that's slightly out of shape or what but you would have thought that the carburetor having a float chamber in it would be set horizontal in the vehicle but if you set the carburetor horizontal the sump isn't horizontal can you see that there the sump isn't horizontal so I've sort of split the difference between the two if you look the sump slopes up that way and the carburetor slopes down that way so there you go it's level enough it's more level than it was before I've split the difference between there and there and it looks to me to be sitting square and that's near enough it was running there before but I was just a bit worried about those engine mounts being a little bit weak they are a bit long and I made them out of metal which was thinner than I should have used because I didn't have any heat to bend with and I needed something that would bend cold and as my old metalwork teacher used to say all cold blacksmiths go to hell so there you go good old Jim Wrigley what a man he was what a man right I'm going to crack on but first I'm going to have a cup of tea bye now well there we go guys and gals it's 4.30 going up for 5 o'clock Wednesday it's back in after a lot of arriving it's back in the right position I haven't finished this side yet but I've got the uh, I've got the engine uh, lined up with the drive belts again it was just uh, it was bound to go back in a slightly different position but it's right now uh, it's all bracketed in alternators on, fans on uh, wiring's in I've just got a bit more wiring cables and pipes to put on what well, cables on this vehicle and uh, <laughs> we'll be back to where we were about four weeks ago uh, but I have to say if I'd have started this engine it would have lasted about 20 minutes because the uh, the oil pipe the oil pipe was rusted right through I just dropped that and it fractured so that would have let all the oil out and blown the engine up the oil cooler was also corroded through so that would have also let the oil out so it would have been a mess and a wreck and uh, thank goodness we've saved it from that so tomorrow I shall continue putting uh, pipes and wires back on I've got the that's the main harness there that goes on to uh, throttle cable and throttle cable and choke cable starter solenoid which I've got to rig somewhere to mount the starter solenoid because uh, it was mounted somewhere else on the other on the other equipment uh, but I shall find somewhere starter back on of course uh, and then and then we're ready for a start somewhere there's going to be a an alternator cable, there's the alternator cable there's the alternator cable that goes on there onto there so that's it for today folks I've had enough, I'm going to call it a day the party's over, it's time to call it a day what's that, oh that's the earth lead, right so we're we're sort of coming we're sort of coming coming well back together now. We're almost ready for uh, some exhaust pipes on and see if she starts. 
I might even get to that tomorrow. I might even get to that tomorrow. She's got oil in. I've cleaned the carburetor, I've rebuilt the alternator, the fuel pump's working okay. All I need to do is put some fuel in it and, and crank it up. We'll probably get a start tomorrow. Let's see. Even even a start even a start on open exhaust parts, but if I cut the uh, if I cut the other pipes off the exhaust, I've got some I've got some foot long pipes. So we can see if she starts. Okay then, catch you tomorrow. Bye for now. Good morning people. It's Friday. Thursday was cancelled due to a flare-up of a dodgy tooth with an abscess. You might be able to see I'm still a bit swollen this side. But uh, I spent most of the day laying on the bed fast asleep uh, after administration of heavy painkillers. And luckily my wife had an unopened pack of amoxicillin because I don't know in the uh, the present COVID regulations I can't get to see a dentist because uh, they keep cancelling my appointments because they can't do them. So uh, this tooth is waiting to come out, but it's uh, it's under control now when I'm back to normal again. So I've been I'm on light duties today, <laughs> light duties. So I'm going to carry on where we left off on Wednesday night, uh, connecting up the wires and the. Uh, cables, control cables on the 2CV engine and, uh, and more or less setting it up to get the engine started because I think we're about, we're about there, we're about ready for that now. Uh, I'm going to take that, uh, I'm going to take this red cowl off again and uh, put a piece of finer mesh over it because at the moment it ingests quite a lot of grass and uh, I don't want it doing that because it will stick between the fins and eventually it will overheat. I mean when you, uh, even on the Briggs and Strattons, this is a common problem. Uh, they pull grass into the cooling cowling, cooling cowling, and then uh, they overheat and the exhaust valve seat comes loose. And you have to strip them down, clean them out, hammer the seat back in, or should I say carefully refit the seat. and. Uh, put them back together again and grind the valves and they always go far better after than they did before uh, but that's what I'm going to do with that I'm going to, I've got this mesh here and I'm going to put that over the top of that mesh just to try and keep the grass out I don't think it'll cut the cooling down any so there you go right I shall get on with that and I shall catch you later right chaps I haven't been ignoring you I've had loads of visitors I think it's now mid afternoon and what I've been doing He's remounting the starter, getting the starter set up so that it meshes correctly. And I've got this solenoid, which was the one that was on the vehicle before, on the vehicle, on the tractor before. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it, there was a bracket on it, but it, was, it actually was broken off. And uh, so I've drilled the pop rivets out and drilled the pop rivets out, drilled the spot welds out and got the, uh, got it clear. So what I'm going to do is mount it there, like so, or probably like so actually, because there's a spare hole there on the starter and it'll just nicely go on there. So that's what I'm going to do next. I've cleaned it all up and I'm now going to make the bracket for it. And I've tested it works, because it's always better to make sure you're fitting a working component before you before you actually go to the trouble of making all the parts for it. There you go. Right. Have I done anything else? Yes, throttle and throttle and choke connected. Alternator connected. Uh, the battery I've got actually fits in perfectly. Uh, haven't tightened the plugs in yet. So that's to do, but I want to get this... I've decided to, to set it up properly and get it running, rather than just get it running and then connect everything up afterwards. Uh, this is the best way to do it. So I'm just cracking on and connecting everything up. And I feel much better, thank goodness, and my two things for now we're thinking of the past. Okay, back for now. Look at this chaps. Whilst looking for something, I've got a piece of rather rather piss poor metal that it'll do to wrap around there for a a fixing for a bracket. And I was looking for something to bend it round. And look what I've come up with. Now isn't that exhaust pipe, if ever you'd seen it, 
and I've got the bending equipment to bend it so that could be part of our new exhaust system and I was only looking on eBay uh, last night and the night before for some seamless steel pipe or some even seam steel pipe you can bend it if you're careful uh, and I was horrified at the prices it was like this much would cost you about 35 quid right in plain plain mild steel which is like ridiculous but there you go we've got some it's slightly on the small side but I don't think that should make any difference uh, when I say slightly I mean very slightly but there you go all right I shall crack on get the, this bracket made and I shall bring you back later good morning people it's Saturday morning I've come back here to refilm the piece I filmed last thing last night because it didn't uh, record properly on the on the camera so I don't know why uh, some confusion over battery it said low battery and then when I checked the battery it said 67% so there you go but anyway I'm filming this piece for you don't I look after you right we've got the uh, the solenoid mounted there got the cable connected to the starter I've got to check that that cable reaches in the morning uh, on Monday uh, but I think that's about it we've got the earth connected up I'm going to have to I've made a bit of a cock up I've made a bit of a cock up because I've set the starter up without actually putting this plate in place That plate goes on there like that. It said struggling. That plate goes on there, something like that. Right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that plate at the outer end of the shaft so that it just fits on and it's lock nutted in place. Because if I do that, when I need to change a belt, all I have to do is take the plate off, not the starter and not all the rest of the gubbins. So I'm going to set that plate up to ride on the outside of those uh, of those nuts as the outermost piece of the whole mechanism so that when I need to change a belt all I need to do is take the plate off thread the belt in round the end of the shaft and it's on right so that's the only piece it started off as a cock up where I'd actually put the starter on and then realised I hadn't put the plate on and then I thought about it and I thought, no, actually, this is quite fortuitous because if I leave that as the outermost piece of the mechanism, all I have to do to change the belt is take the plate off. It's going to work. So I'm happy with that. Got all my throttles and my choke connected. All that's working. Uh, I need to put some sort of air filter on, which is going to have to go through the bonnet uh, because it's, uh, as you can see by that blowback mark, it's very close to the very close to the bonnet so I'm going to go through the bonnet with it and put an air cleaner on the top and have the bonnet just drop over the air cleaner uh, but that's a job for Monday so there we go thanks for watching thanks for commenting please subscribe please give us a comment send me a like oh there's the fine mesh on there look there's the that fits really well that looks really good right people that's it Saturday morning it's all over. I'll see you next Monday and not next Tuesday. Bye for now.